Welcome everyone, this is the GSOC Jenkins Docker Base Quick Start uh, weekly meeting. We're on the 5th of June 2023. Uh, today we have Ashutosh, of course, Beviento, and Jean Marc, who happens to be an admin and also interested by the subject. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, I'm not uh editing the right part <laughs> let's do it again so who is there we don't have lisa of course it's something like 1 a.m uh in california we don't have chris we have jean marc we don't have said and we have jean marc i think we're good uh so what can we say about what happened in the previous week. Um, Ashutosh, you proposed your first Docker Compose and you had some issues with um, SSH part. SSH, yes. Yes, and I think that Beviento uh, proposed a um, workaround and in the end you have something that works. But could you please tell us more about what happened and what is the current status of your first example, if you don't mind? So as we decided, I, cre I created the simple uh, Docker fi file for the first version. And I was having uh, issues with uh, the RSA keys. They were not uh, working for some reason. We still don't know why they were not working. Uh, so I asked it in the Gitter channel. Then Barviento recommended to use uh, ED25519 format for generating keys. So that one worked. Uh, but we still don't know why RSA was not working. And some of uh, the Docker images uh, were working and some of them were not working. Like latest version was not working and LTS was working. So uh, just by my curiosity, so you generated key for RSA? Yes. And this did not work? Yes. And so you used uh, what is the the, the key? Ed two five five one nine. Ed two. Yeah. Okay. It's linked with the SSH version. Okay. I'll 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 try to understand what was happening if I have time during the weekend and come back to the group. But you have a workaround, right? Yes. Uh, thank you, Josh. Um, could you please, I don't know if you have still the link to the um, uh, document, but uh, don't hesitate to edit and put the right information because I'm trying to take the notes, but I don't have all the acronyms right. So, you know, with the name of the key for Martin's on and the version of Jenkins you use. So feel free to yes, yes. modify it. Thank you. Um, okay. Thanks a lot. And while doing so, I tried on my own. And um, I may have gone a little too far because I studied your example and say, hey, uh, he's not using JCASC. How does he do to uh, link the agent and the controller while not using JCASC? Does he, he have to do it by hand? once um, the Jenkins controller has started or what is happening. So I went ahead and tried to add JCASC and the SSH auto connection and um, uh, automatic first uh, user login. And it went way too far, I guess, but at least that will give us some material to study later on. It has an interest, I guess, because um, when the user starts with Docker Compose, he has a fully functioning Jenkins instance with the controller, with um, an agent, no job for the time being, but everything works out of the box. The downside of it <laughs> is that it's pretty much too complicated to read, and there are a bunch of files, uh, a custom batch file, for example, that does install JCASC directly by downloading HPI files and so on. So there are pros and cons of using uh, this file. So I don't know if we will supply it as is. We'll see. And 
furthermore, it's not your work. It's based on your work, but it's mine, which is not the goal of GSOC. So we may very well forget all about this. Um, I know we, I didn't ask for a demo, um, but if you feel like it, um, could you please let us know how to start uh, your first example that does work now? And what is um, workflow for the end user? Does he have to look at the logs, take uh, the key that has been generated the first time by Jenkins, put it in the UI? How does he or she uh, connect the agent via SSH to the controller and so on? So do you mind um, giving us a demo or is it too early? Uh, for my, uh, the, my Docker Compose file, uh, the yep. key I have uh, generated by myself and added it, uh, the private Private key we have to uh, integrate by the UI. Uh, public key is already in the Docker file, but okay. a private key we have to set it in the credentials option uh, from the Docker uh, Jenkins UI. I thought that right was now. the case. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but would you like to show us by sharing your screen or is it too much? Okay, I can share. Wait a second. Oh, thank you. Mm. So let me stop sharing so you can share your screen. Uh, Berviento, while Ashutosh is preparing, uh, did you get time to subscribe to Ashutosh repo? I have subscribed to the repo. Cool. So I can check on the site and Berviento should subscribe to Ashutosh repo. Um, I'll remove Sage so that, yeah, now I can check. Berviento and Bruno should subscribe. Oh, you're doing it via Gitpod. Super cool. Yes. That's the cherry on the cake. Okay. I'll have to uh, install the SSH uh, plugin, uh -huh. I guess. Okay. While it's happening, I wanted to talk about the SSH situation. Should we uh, make user to create his or her own SSH keys, or should we provide the default ones for no, I seamless experience? Provide, yeah, default ones. Uh, that makes okay. one less step for the end user. Yes, I was also thinking that. So it just only include Docker Compose up. OK. Um... The only way I know um, of not having to enter the initial password is using JCASK. 
uh, Beavianto, do you know of any other way without using Jcask so the end user doesn't have to look for the initial password in the log files and then report it in the UI? Mm, I, I haven't tried that. Okay, it was just in case. I don't know how to do that, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> without Jcask. I know how to do it with Jcask, but I... you have to install the Jcask plugin first, which could be a pain in the neck. Yes, your mark. Um couple of things uh, uh, there. So I don't want to interfere uh, in, in the process. So I've been working on that quite a lot uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, one of the things that can solve quite a lot of uh, issues in the demo here is that we build our own local images with preloaded plugins. And this can be uh, then then used. So I I don't know. I didn't look at the, the Docker Compose, but uh, installing some prerequisites uh, uh, can be done. So all this manual stuff we need to get rid of. Yes. Uh, the thing is, Omar, I, I totally agree with you, uh, one hundred percent. The thing is, I always try to balance between the. Um, um, most automation possible, you know, so the user just have to launch the Docker Compose and have a fully working Jenkins instance and the readability or the complexity of the set of Docker files, Docker Compose and so on. You know, um, um, on the, um, in the ex existing documentation, uh, you have to create Docker file. You have to, it's way too complicated for the first time user. So I didn't want to replicate that. I wanted to have something as simple as possible, you know, Docker Compose and bam, you're good to go. But the downside of it is that um, there is some hidden complexity and it will have to resurface at one time. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, I, I would like everything to be I, automatic, of course. Can I give my point? And this is of also course. the you're reason welcome. why I, I uh, raised my hand uh, earlier. So uh, there is something you need to, to think about. Uh, and I see that you're exploring different things, is to know where you're going to put the focus on. One is maximize the, or, or minimize the time required for somebody who wants to look what Jenkins is. And so he just runs it and there he is. He has a job populated, it starts building, it starts doing. He can explore the UI. There, we should use a maximum automation. The other thing is we want to teach people how to set up uh, uh, Jenkins and have readable uh, uh, um, Docker files or readable um, Compose files, and we, we have that. But there, we're trying to mix water and oil. <laughs> yes, indeed. And this doesn't work. So my hint, my hints here is uh, try to know what you're going to focus on and work in that direction, and then eventually add more things in your your. The, these are my two uh, uh, two cents. So, and, and a good tip here is try to describe the person who will use a persona. Yeah. Who is he? Who are you talking to when you're designing your system? These are just my, I, I, I should refrain. In, in... No, not at all. Uh, your thoughts are welcome uh, if we're going the wrong way. Yeah, of course, it's... you said it perfectly. Mixing oil and water doesn't work that well. And we're trying to do the two things at the same time. And of course, after some time, it will, uh, I don't know the term, all will be on top of the water. Um, yeah. yeah, the persona ID is a very good idea. Um, try how try to, to describe, down. try to describe yeah. him. And, and you can describe two persons. I think we will have to. Yes. What do you think of that? That should tell you. Yes, I, uh, the two persona thing is better, I think. One for complete automation and one for easy understandability. Yeah. 
and, and trying to, wow, okay, it's my opinion, so think about it, but uh, is the idea is mine. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, but that's unfair. What's happening? It's trying to connect or? It's connected. It's, done. Successfully it's okay. Done. Yes. Is the agent connected? Yes, it's connected. Uh, uh, just a few comments uh, there. Uh, one of the things if you do a demo uh, is the, all my old memories are coming back is that uh, <laughs> we also need to implement straight away good practices. A good practice is, for instance, to turn the number of uh, build queues on the controller off. Because this is a huge security threat. And show the people, this is the way a standard uh, a Jenkins system works. But I'm throwing too many things at you, so I'm, I'm sorry for that. And not it. Try to try to do. Uh, well, I feel uncomfortable for that. I shouldn't have come to the meeting. Just wow. listen to the recording. Uh, my suggestion would be take a moment to describe the personas. Uh, so, uh, who are you talking to? So you will know what are the important things to do. I've thrown additional ideas by watching uh, the screen. Uh, this you should, these you should park. Um, I will have a chat with you, Bruno, tomorrow. I'll share your my ideas and, and yeah. observations or recommendations to you, and so you can discuss them uh, tomorrow uh, instead of interfering in your meeting. No, you're not interfering. You're sharing ideas, which I I do appreciate. Appreciate. Uh, thanks a lot for your input, Jean Marc. Um, just going to show my example, if I don't suffer the demo effect, uh, showing that hopefully uh, everything will start by itself. You know, I haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. It's just starting, you know, I've got um, agent already configured, ready to go. Okay, uh, some things happened during the weekend, I guess, uh, because some uh, dependency... Yeah, uh, there were I guess. some. Uh, we'll see, but it's supposed to be working out of the box, uh, so the end user doesn't have to log in, doesn't have to create an agent, doesn't have to enter any key. It just works how out of the box. Don't install it. I've already said it. Is that the Docker Compose file is kind of complicated. Uh, so yes, I think this one is for. The first persona that you described, John Mark. And it could also be interesting for the second persona if he wants to study what's inside. And I made it also too complicated because I chose to not create a custom Docker file, do everything via Docker Compose. And so that means changing the entry point, making a custom one, downloading HPI directly, and so on. And this would have been so much easier with a Docker file, so custom local Docker image, like you described yes. earlier, Sean Mark. So it's not such a good idea, it's just to show that it can be done for the first yeah, time of those kind of personas. I did it two years ago. I'm, I made a presentation yeah. on that Jenkins. I don't want to say that I made something that hasn't been done before. Just that, no, no, uh, but you there, there's, several, there, there's several methods uh, that can be used and, and the group needs to choose. Uh, yeah. Um, 
So Ashutosh, do you feel like you could describe the two kind of personas and then maybe um, orient? I don't know if that's an English word. You know, um, pivot, pivot uh, your work for one kind of personas of the other kind of personas, or maybe we won't have time to work for the two kind of personas. So maybe you will have to do only one kind of Docker Compose example files or one type of persona. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, if it's okay with you trying to work for the two kind of persona after having described them. Yes, I also think it's a good idea to describe them first. So the first one is for uh, like, uh, so we get everything out of the box, like you, you made something like yep. this. And uh, second, try to describe who he is, try to, to describe you see a friend and you describe what does he want uh he he wants to see what jenkins says right now he okay. he doesn't want to get into docker docker compose he just wants to see what jenkins is how jenkins okay. works what's the feel Des of jenkins. describe that describe that and and try to add uh, some ideas like how much time does he need how much he... time and this, well, you don't need to answer right now, but uh, uh, so you have some metrics. And this is why I just wanted to ask that you using Gitpod is a brilliant idea. Because the, the persons won't have to go into complicated local installation. So this is brilliant. Just my two cents. Sorry to intervene again. No, no, that's okay. That's great. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Uh, thank you thank for you sharing much. your experience and so on. No, no, that's cool. Uh, hop là. Um, for the first time user. Yeah. Uh, cool. Berviento, so, do you use Gitpod? I know reasons. You you never used it. Never. Okay, I find it I find it uh, neat. So uh, there is there is a free tier. As long as they do that, our solution is viable. But you have a good, powerful Docker environment available. Yes. I think it's fifty hours of free tier for everyone per month. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But anyway, if I'm I'm interested to have your experience, and uh, Bervia, uh, Bervianto, if if you go to um, uh, Gitpod and you want to experiment, that uh, suggestion is that you take notes how long it takes you to set it up, understand how it works, get going to have a prompt. Okay, sure. I think it's so a good please, idea. So we can add that to a Shutosh uh, quick start overhead. Nice. And the idea for Bruno uh, or in a Shutosh is. Uh, I should, I, I'm, I'm getting very interested in, in what you're doing, shouldn't, but um, I, I like it very much. Uh, when you have written the the personas description and that, that we, we can start working on, uh, on that, uh, can you ping me so that I'm sure that I, I can have a look to it and, and add my ideas? Uh, yes, to it I'll be sure to ping you. <laughs> I have too much noise and too much notifications all over the place. So, and uh, I, I need to discuss with Bruno if if I want to to help. I I fear that Said is disappearing. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm if if. Oh. So you're wanting to be a commenter. I, uh, wow, that's great news. <laughs> I don't want to push you too much. You didn't say anything, but. Here, 
Um, I, sh I shouldn't because otherwise I least lose the overview of the, the complete program. I need also to care for the others. But here you of have course. an interesting subject and I don't want to leave uh, two persons alone. With, with Very kind of yours, but you've got already so much on your plate. Uh, I would be. I discussed that with you, with you. Yeah, yeah. We'll see that tomorrow. Yeah. And and uh, would the two others accept me as a co-mentor? Yes, you need to vote. <laughs> <laughs> but Viento, you're not. Still yeah. on mute. Okay. On or. Show us your thumbs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Oh, uh, just yeah. just giving you help, and, and so I'm I'm I I want to refresh my knowledge on the subject. Uh, let me see. I will write it down. Oh, then there are proofs. Himself uh, as commenter. Uh, okay. But uh, of course, uh, it will be super cool to have you that you have yes, already so, so many things to do, but <laughs> Why not? Try to interest uh, me. Okay. Uh, we'll thanks discuss it. That would be cool. Um, Ashutosh, anything else you would like to, to share before we look at uh, the action items? Uh, as you recommended, I did attend the Docs Office Hour meeting uh, really? on Friday. Oh, so cool. Yes. How did it go? Yes, it went good. Uh, Chris and Mark was there. Uh, they asked about the project and the Docker files. I uh, showed it to them, and they pro uh, proposed some, uh, asked some questions, and recommended some things. Chris uh, w uh, recommended to document every step of the Docker file, every point, uh, every command in the Docker file. So what it does, and if it's removed later, like I have uh, in my Docker file, I have. Uh, gave the pri privileges of root to both of the containers because mm -hmm. I didn't want to get any uh, errors in starting. So he recommended to uh, give comments or any type of uh, to notes example to remember that why they were put here and when they'll be removed. So we remember everything. And Mark Ooh. also proposed, um, I have that notes. Wait a second, I'll share the link. Yes, please. And you can put the link directly if you want to in the yes. document. It's at the bottom of the page. Oh, maybe you put something in the chat. Oh, of course. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh... Hey. So it's very, very <laughs> little. Uh, okay. Can I see it in another way? I don't know. Okay, uh, let me try it this way. Much better. Come. Okay, my PC is struggling. I don't think there is more. Really? Oh, yeah. DDs. 
<laughs> okay. And it's above okay. two. Yeah. Uh, I will put the link nonetheless into our notes. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, so you didn't talk about how and where to insert new documentation about Docker in the existing Jenkins IO documentation side. Uh, we talked okay. about that too. Mark recommended uh, to eliminate uh, the Windows section and Docker section to merge all of them into one section because Docker Compose works on every operating system similarly. Uh, and yeah, we didn't talk much about it because it was the first meeting and I told of him course. that I, I'm here only for getting familiar right now. So I, I even didn't think he would be able to ask any question about this project, just listing. So that's already a major first step discussing the whole project with the dog sick. That's cool. Thank you. Chris was also there uh, for discussing uh, when this project about because that also contains documentation part. That's cool. Thanks for attending. I wanted to do it by myself uh, on Thursday because there are the European and US yes, um, yes. version of the Docs Office Hour, but it was a very tight schedule and we didn't manage to address that. So thanks for doing it. And hopefully I also talk about that on the next iteration, which happens to be this Thursday. We'll see. Cool. Um, Anything else you'd like to share? Uh, no, not in, nothing else. Okay. So uh, this one, this action item, Bruno should start a discussion with the dog sig is still valid uh, nonetheless. Uh, so you already have started the discussion, but I tried to talk about that when we have time in the dog's office hours. And maybe you can do also if there is time in your um how is it called asia uh office hours yeah yes it's asia oh. and you. thank you but don't feel like you have to attend each and every one of them it's just a nice plus if you can but don't feel like you have to do it okay we're still very early in the process so we have time so don't don't rush on this subject um so this one is still valid and the third one i know you don't like it that much uh jean marc and i agree with you there is still plenty of time so we don't have to start the discussion with the infra team yet on community jenkins.io um we still have it time. can be later in the month so. yeah or maybe yes. even next month the second the, part, the second phase yeah the automation part of this project is super cool, but even if it's not there in September, that's not the end of the world. It's not the major part of the project. It's a nice plus, you know, like the... No, it's not really like the Gitpod one. The Gitpod one is a super nice plus, a quick win for just about everybody. But the automation is just to ensure that it will still work a few weeks from now, a few months from now, even a few years from now. So we'll see. That's nice, but if it does not exist in September, that's still okay-ish. So no hurry, no pressure on that part. Um, that being said, I think I've seen in your Docker Compose and Docker file um, references to later or no references to a specific version of uh, Jenkins. Am I right? Yes. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got a friend who happens to tell me every time because that was one of my bad habits. Friends don't let friends run later. Uh, because it's changing just about every week for the weekly version. And it's changing uh, every 12 weeks or so for the LTS. So there are sometimes major changes uh, that will make your project not behave like it used to do because you're using later, so it's a moving tag. So it's not such a good idea to keep using latest. So one of um, the things you could do, maybe have a look at the Docker Hub for 
the images of the Jenkins controller, Docker, uh, SSH agent, and so on, and fix a version. Maybe LTS uh, would be a good one. I think you're using LTS, right? Yes. But, you know, um, have the correct tag with the number. I think it is or it will be 401.1.2.3 uh, for the current LTS. And same for the agent. Look if there is a um, uh, LTS version. I don't think so, but look at the version and put the, num, uh, the, the number associated with the version when you're using the images. Later on, if we have time, we'll try to use a tool like, um, how is it called, Dependabot or Update CLI. To... Well, no, that, that was what I wanted to say. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely I vote for your <laughs> commentary, Tom Mark. We're on the same line. Um, yeah. yeah, that would be cool. So we can uh, uh, keep up to date uh, the images. Of course, this could change. You know, the behavior may change because there is a change log. Yeah. There are some changes in the binaries, but there will be a PR made by Dependabot or a exactly. line. And so we will be able to have a look at the checks and see if it's still behaving the same way it was doing before. So first thing it's... first, yes, go ahead, Jamal. I know, I just wanted to emphasize that and, and just to explain exactly uh, what the difference is. When you use latest, the underlying changes and upgrades are invisible. And so uh, you're, you're following, you don't have control on what's happening. When you use pinned version, though when you specify the version clearly and is the other condition. You use a tool that will stop, uh, spot the upgrade. So the, the tool, if you're not familiar with Dependabot or Update CLI, it is it will walk through your file and say, oh, there is a new version available. And it will automatically create a PR. That means that you're aware that a new version is and that either yourself or the CI system will auto automatically check the, uh, the branch, the PR branch, and will check, okay, this is an upgrade that will work because we checked it. And you review the, the release notes. Yes, I approve it. On the other side, if you use latest, you, you restart the project, it doesn't work anymore. What changed? Oh, I, I don't know. See the difference? And so it is a very good habit to work the, 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 the way pinned version with an uh, automatic update. Did I, did I understand, yes. uh, explain that correctly? Yes, thank you. So, just to explain the uh, and, and give some time to uh, Bruno to write. Uh, Thanks a lot, Mark. <laughs> the notes, the notes. When I was younger, there were not the, the, these automatic update tools uh, didn't exist, and this was a mess. And so we had big, big fights between production and development. So. It is something you can use in whatever uh, development project you will you will deal with later. Um, yes, that's a very nice thing to know uh, for other projects too, even if they are not open source, of course. Uh, yes, Dependabot does a great job and it's pretty easy to um, install into your project. There are just a GitHub action, I think, to, to configure and you're done. Update CLI, on the other hand, is much more powerful, but also way more difficult to configure and install. I'm currently fighting with it for Jenkins IO um, website itself. I'm trying to install update CLI on Jenkins IO. So the documentation is always up to date when referring to versions. But boy, well, it's using a lot of uh, regular expressions. And even if I love regular expression, they don't love me uh, in return. Ah, so, okay. Uh, I just wanted to... 
<laughs> yeah, uh, it's a Golang version of the regular expression, which is not the Perl one of the one you find in Emacs. Uh, very look-alike, but not exactly the same. And it's sometimes difficult. It's challenging to use them. But it's lots of fun uh, whenever it works <laughs> in the end. What would you recommend to uh, Ashutosh? Start um, with? Uh, start with Dependabout. Uh, frankly, it can handle the um, Docker image versions. So that would be a quick win. I guess, because if ever you go the um, update CI route, you could spend just one week having it working correctly for your repo. So I think that's not um, urgent investment. You know, you could do way better, way quicker with um, dependable for the time being. If you ever feel like it, you don't have to. What I'd like you to do is to have fixed version, pinned versions. Then maybe if you have time, if you feel inclined to use that, you could use depend about and maybe in august or so if we still have time go the update CLI route and by august i hope i will know more about update CLI so i could maybe help you um use it for this project we'll see or, or not maybe i will go completely crazy and throw it out of the window <laughs> we'll see any question about that uh, ashutosh no, I'll I'll work on I'll see how we can integrate that. Cool. Um so do you consider your first example for one of or the other persona uh ready to go? No, I don't think it's ready yet. Uh, so what okay. do we do about what uh, so we should discuss the about the persona thing right now first if uh, yeah what we will do about that should we automate everything or i'll i'll work on the personas for two different personas one with fully automated and one with simple explanation got it Okay, and if ever you find out why the keys were not working, uh, yes. feel free to write a few lines or in communityjenkins.io or even prepare a blog post if you feel like it. So other people facing the same issues could get uh, some information on how to solve it. But don't think that you have to do it. It's a nice plus, but if you are already overwhelmed by the amount of things to do, just forget it. But as you please. I'll try it. Okay. No, uh, no rest, no pressure. Okay. I will look on my site too. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> cool. I I remember something. I stumbled on equivalent problem a couple of months ago, but I don't forget. This comes with white hairs, is that you start forgetting. <laughs> or <laughs> even losing hair, you know? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, okay, this problem. I, I would prefer know. having uh, gray or white hair instead of losing them, whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, we still have a few minutes to go, so uh, let's have a look at the action items. So Bruno should start discussion. Fine, discussion. Uh, this one is not mandatory and we can do it another time. Fix the pinned version of the image. And what else? Uh, Figure out the personas. The personas, yeah. yes, I just personas. wanted to make sure. To personnel. And uh, adds also this bonus point, uh, the uh, SSH key issue to explain that. Uh, in the uh, office hours I attended on Friday, Chris mentioned something about SHM size that will be uh, used in Git lab plugin. I don't uh, uh, understand it completely right now. Uh, can you open the 
docs for that office hours, the Asia one. And uh, in the last part, I think. Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe it no, was no. I, up. Up. Maybe it was above. Related to the GitLab plugin? Yes, SHM size. Oh, this oh one. SSM. Yes. Um, Never heard of that. I don't, I don't know what that is. Yes, I don't know completely either, but it's something about shared memory between Docker container and host, I think. Is it a Docker parameter or? Uh... Yes, it's a Docker parameter, Docker Compass parameter. Wow. Never Shoot heard science, that. never heard. Where is my mouse? Well, okay, I'll, I'll look it up after the meeting. Cool, uh, thank you. Uh, we're almost out of time. I think I had set up something like about 50 minutes or so. Um, anything else we should address before wrapping it up, Ashdosh? No, everything's done, I think. Cool, thank you. <laughs> Davianto, would you have any question, comment, feedback? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I wanted to uh, uh, raise my thumb to uh, Berianto to have been quick in in solving uh, Ashutosh issue and put him in rails and spotting the problems and, and helping him. I've seen it Thank from the far, much. but it's, yeah. Yes. Thank you so much because I tried to and fell down in a rabbit hole, as I said, and I didn't give you any feedback for one day and a half or two days even. And I gave you an answer to a question you never asked. So uh, thank you and congrats, Berviento. You were spot on. Very good job. Okay, looks like uh, we reached the end of the meeting. Thanks a lot for attending. And Jean-Marc, if you feel like it, you're very welcome to be part of the team. That will be my pleasure to have you on board. You're tempting me, but I, I, you're doing a good job. So uh, I just need to yes, but it would be even put my grain of salt you. here and there. But yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Food with salt is better for the taste and not for the health. But your salt is welcome too. <laughs> we'll talk <laughs> about that tomorrow, uh, Bruno. Don't yeah, with it. pleasure. Got it. Uh, so I close it down. Thanks a lot for coming and we'll discuss uh, later on in the Gitter channel. Feel free to chime in and I'll try to help much better this week than last week. We'll see. Anyhow, uh, have a good rest of the day, all of you, and see you next week at work. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.